Hi, and welcome back to Now You Know. I'm Mr. G, and a lot of you out there ask me to discuss electricity. So today, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to define and then discuss electricity. We're going to have some experiments with electricity that will maybe get you, get your wheels turning and get you to maybe get a better idea of what electricity is and exactly how it works. Now, I want to start out by saying that so many things that are written in textbooks about electricity, they're just downright wrong. And so I'm going to dispel some of the myths today concerning electricity. And I'm going to start with my own definition, as usual on Now You Know, of electricity. In simplest terms, electricity must be defined as at least three separate concepts. Electricity is a force known as electrical energy, a substance known as electric charge, or the directed movement of this charge known as electric current. Electrical energy, also known as electromagnetic energy, is a wave traveling at near light speed through a sea of electrons in a conductor. Electrical energy flows in one direction, in a closed loop known as a circuit from a source such as your wall socket or a battery, and into a load such as a light bulb above me here, or even a pickle. This moving wave is what gets transferred into energy such as the light from a light bulb or heat in electric heaters. This form of electricity is consumed by the load, or the light, consumed by the load, and it's what the electric company is selling you when you get your electric bill. On the other hand, we have electric charge. Electric charge exists in all matter. It's the attracting force which holds all matter together. The amount of electric charge in any object usually remains constant. So the amount of electric charge in this very battery is always constant. It may just not have the ability to pump as well when it gets depleted. But the charge really doesn't change. Lastly, there is electric current. It moves slowly through a circuit. We're talking very slowly, slower than molasses pouring. In either one direction, this would be called direct current, or in two directions. We call this alternating current, or AC. Unlike electrical energy, it's not converted to light or heat and can flow into the load and back out of the load. So it flows into the light bulb and back out the other end of the light bulb and is never really consumed by the load. It's the electrical energy that is being consumed by the load, but not the electric current itself. Okay, that being said, that's a lot to talk about. Let me talk about something else before we get started here. People say that this battery creates electricity. That's dead wrong. People say that your wall socket or that the electric company generates electricity. That's completely wrong. Electricity is already in the conductors that transfer the electricity or the electrical energy, I should say. So inside of here, we have electrons. And being a conductor, a conductor is anything that's a metallic substance. And usually a conductor, due to the way the electrons are configured in the conductor, usually it makes it look shiny to us. Now let's just take any metal, for instance. For instance, inside of this insulated wire is a piece of copper. This copper has in it electrons that are orbiting atoms. Now the outer shell electrons around these atoms are free to move and are constantly moving in this copper wire or in this metal terminal of this battery or in this copper part of this electrical plug here, this prong. It's full of what we might want to call electricity or electrical fluid at all times. This copper wire has it in there. It's just that it's not able to be pushed through the wire until we add a source or a pump, a source of energy or a pump to push it through the wire. So let's start out by saying right here I've got a meter. Let me zoom you in a little bit. Here we go. And right here I have a meter which measures electrical energy. 
and we can see that the meter right now has a bunch of zeros on it. And here I have a fan. Now this fan is nothing more than a bunch of magnets, and we can see in there it's a bunch of magnets and copper windings. There are no real batteries per se, or there's no source of electricity here, yet if I spin this fan, watch what happens. Look at the meter when I spin the fan. This fan becomes a generator. I spin it, and the meter changes. You actually saw this fan generate electricity. Hold on, just one minute there. This fan, when spun, isn't generating anything. It's simply pumping electrons, which are already present, in the copper windings of the fan through the copper conductor. When it pushes these electrons, it creates electrical energy, and the electrical energy then is able to change the numbers on our meter. So now, if I, if I attach a battery, just a simple battery, to the fan, look at this. What's happening here? The battery is acting as a pump, and it's pumping electrons that are free to move throughout this copper conductor, which is what makes copper a conductor. It has these free electrons. And it simply is pushing them through the wire, okay, the electrons, and this pushing of electrons through this wire into this fan, and then back out of the wire produces electrical energy, or a wave that, tra that travels. Now that wave is traveling at the, nearly the speed of light, the wave of electrical energy. However, the flow of electrons in this wire is moving very, very slowly, slower than molasses. So this little pump here, our battery, is pumping those electrons very slowly. Well, how can it move this fan so rapidly if it's pumping so slowly? Let's think about when you ride a bicycle. When you ride a bicycle, you have a gear that's attached to a chain. Think of each link in that chain as an electron. Now think of that chain as your path for the flow, like this copper wire is. When you turn the, f the, the pedal, when the pedals move, the front crank turns and turns that gear. Now, you're going to pull that chain and push it at the bottom side, but that chain is going to pull another gear at the back where your wheel is. And when you think about it, that chain doesn't have to move very fast at all. It can move actually very slowly, and the back wheel can turn very quickly. It's the same here. You're basically pumping those electrons very slowly through the wire, but because this is full of those electrons, a big sea of just packed full of them, when I push some at the one end, it makes a reaction at the other end. And all through the circuit, it's just like a constant moving very slowly. However, the energy is a wave that's traveling very quickly. Let me see if I can describe this in another way. When I'm speaking to you, my vocal cords are creating sound waves which travel through the air. The air molecules themselves are not moving rapidly from my vocal cords to you. What's moving rapidly are the waves that are traveling through the air molecules all around us, right? The air is staying very still. It's right in front of me. It's barely moving at all. Your air in front of you is barely moving at all. But it may be blowing with a little bit of wind, a little bit of motion there, but the sound waves are traveling through the air molecules very rapidly, extremely fast, and getting to your ear from my vocal cords very quickly. Okay. I told you that a conductor has electrons that are roaming freely throughout it. So this pickle actually is a pretty good conductor and it's full of electrons that are roaming freely, but they need some direction. And if we're going to direct these electrons, what we're going to do is we're going to apply an AC current to the pickle, right from our wall socket actually. So this is alternating current which is produced, not really produced, which is pumped, I should say, not produced, almost made the mistake myself which is pumped from our electric company, which I pay them for. I want to repeat that I'm not asking you to do any of the experiments that you see here because they're often very dangerous, and I would hate to have something bad happen to you. So, don't repeat what you're about to see at home. It's plugged in. 
Oh goodness, what's going to happen here to our pickle? Oh, it's starting to sizzle and smoke, and look at that. It's starting to fluoresce. We've got smoke shooting out of the side of it, and look at this. Wow. Okay, now, as the pickle gets hot and dries out, it starts to lose the ability to conduct. So when it loses the ability to conduct, I've unplugged it here. We're going to try this from an end. Ooh, it's getting quite warm, I can tell you that. So when it loses its ability to conduct, what occurs is it'll stop lighting up. Here we go again. Oh boy, look at that. We got steam pouring out of the holes. And now the other end, and the entire pickle is starting to glow. Wow, check that out. Now, what's moving fast there? The electrical energy is moving very fast. The actual flow of electrical current is very, very slow, however. Well, there we go. So, I hope you all enjoyed our pickle bulb. Electricity. Now you know. The amount of electrical charge in any object remains constant. And I'm going to start over because the dog is barking, of course. Therefore, forcing them to create electrical energy. Nice to spin the fan. Spin the fan.